Hey there, have you challenged your R&D team to bake high protein bread? Well, if you're dealing with issues when baking for high protein, this is the episode to watch. Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Ask Dr. Lin. Before I start, I would like to thank MGP Ingredients for sponsoring this episode. The Fiber Seam RS4 Resistant Wheat Starch is low FODMAP certified and ideal in products that support digestive health. Their Arise Wheat Protein Isolates provide up to 90% protein and improved functionality. Together, they reduce net carbohydrates in bakery products, making it possible for you to bake high protein. Find out how at mgpingredients.com. If you're a traditional baker, you must be thinking, what in the world is Dr. Lin talking about? High protein? There's nothing high protein about bread. Plus, too much vital wheat gluten would result in a cardboard like texture. Well, bakers, if you haven't checked out the new technologies available, wait till you hear what Sarah Fisher has to recommend to you later in this episode. Also, let's focus on the keto trend as this is where it's calling for high protein or zero net carb breads. As some of you may know, the keto bread trend is fast growing. It's a fast growing weight loss dietary trend that demand products that are high in protein and low in net carbs. What is different in this trend, say, compared to the Atkins diet many years ago? Well, I like to say that the keto trend pushes the consumption of fiber, as it has made fiber a key element in the calculation of net carbs. Now, this diet had effectively treated refractory epilepsy in the US in the 1920s. Imagine that, its roots started in 1920s. Over the last century, Voitlin, Cordon, Atkins all had placed their personal touches on it, coining the terms paleo, keto, and Atkins diet. Whether or not you agree with it, by now at least one of your friends are refusing to eat your bread, potato, or any kind of carb dish that you bring to your potluck. Don't feel offended. Get into the game. Produce something that everyone can eat at your next sales presentation meeting to your customers. Here's Sarah to tell you more about how to do it. Welcome, Sarah. Hello, Dr. Lin. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak with you today. I am Sarah Fisher, and I am the Food Technology Manager at MGP Ingredients. <music> There are quite a few keto-friendly products in the market these days with low levels of carbohydrates. Besides keto ice cream, confectionery, cereal, sauces, beverages, noodles, and other grocery items, specifically in the baking area, I've seen keto breads like this one, for example, at a local wholesale store that I went to. And tortillas and buns, such as this one that I picked up that I'll be using for examples later on in this video. Bagels, bars, baking mixes, and cookies. These keto friendly products have, that I was looking at have zero to five grams of net carbohydrates. You should be able to use up to 3% vital wheat gluten easily. Even at that level, you would find a bucky dough that is hard to mix out, thus requiring mix reducers like L-cysteine or inactivated yeast. If you do go higher than 3%, you would experience more issues with the processing of the dough. To increase protein content without affecting dough rheology, Try other sources of protein like whey, 
egg, soy, even pea protein. Or keep things simple. Reach out to MGP for wheat protein isolates from the Arise line. Why? Because Arise proteins doesn't affect the buckiness of your dough, even though it increases the protein content significantly. Let's first start out by explaining how to calculate total carbohydrates. Now, the FDA says that total carbohydrate content shall be calculated by subtraction of the sum of the crude protein, total fat, moisture, ash, and total weight of food that is customarily consumed for eating occasion. So here I have a keto bun and you customarily consume one bun per eating occasion. And this bun has one gram of net carbs. So let's get to that value. So first we're gonna calculate total carbohydrates. So start out with your bun or the total weight of your food product and subtract out the amount of fat, the amount of moisture, amount of ash and protein. And now I'm left with the total carbohydrates. Next, let's calculate the net carbohydrate value. So you take the total carbohydrates value and you subtract out the non-digestible carbohydrates or approved dietary fibers and also the non-digestible sugars or sugar alcohols that you may or may not be using in your product. And you're left with one gram of net carbohydrates from your starting one bun. Two things I really like about the keto diet is that there is no sugar in the bread and there is a ton of fiber. Reducing net carbs, like Sarah said, uses fiber to get there. So what fiber should you use? Well, really anything that you currently use in your bakery. Oat fiber is commonly used. However, with oat fiber, you would need to make sure that it's properly hydrated before using it. Most oat fiber also affect dough rheology, which eventually produces a denser crumb that doesn't eat well. So there is a fiber that doesn't affect water absorption and dough rheology. It is called resistant starch. Resistant starch is just like its name. It's resistant to absorption in your GI tract so that it acts like a fiber and moves along your digestive tract without a caloric contribution. There are four types of resistant starches. So go to this page to learn more about it. Now, there is a special kind of resistant starch that you can use from MGP ingredients, and it's from their FibroSim line. So reach out to them at their email below to get a sample of FibroSim today. While some keto-friendly products have five grams of net carbs, other keto products have zero or nearly zero grams of net carbs. And believe me, this can be a challenging task if you don't start out with the right ingredients. But here at MGP, I am pretty lucky that I have ingredients such as a resistant wheat starch, which is an approved dietary fiber, and also various wheat proteins that have these viscoelastic properties that are needed to make bread and other big products. Now, when I am using these functional ingredients, um, it also helps out to get to that zero net carb claim because as I explained for calculating out net carbs, you start out with uh, one serving and you subtract out the amount of protein, 
and the amount of dietary fiber. And now you're left with net carbs. So in this example, I have about one gram of net carbs. One way to replace wheat flour is to think about what are the main components of wheat flour? What is wheat flour made of? And the two main components of wheat flour are starch and protein. So the starch is needed for the dough structure. And when I'm making a keto baked product, I prefer to use all of my starch from using our resistant wheat starch, which is an approved dietary fiber. So I can get to or close to that zero net carbs claim. Because again, with a bun example, you take out from the total carbs minus the fiber equals the net carbs. The second main component of wheat flour is protein, which stabilizes the dough structure and provides extensibility, so extensibility and elasticity. And therefore, I use functional wheat protein isolates like our Arise line, because you can have a wheat protein isolate that's more extensible or one that's more elastic. And oftentimes I use a combination of both to give those great viscoelastic properties that I need in big products such as keto breads. And when I'm replacing wheat flour, what better ingredients of protein and starches than wheat-based ingredients? And there are other proteins and starches, fibers available on the market but be sure to screen them for off flavors, heavy and or grainy textures, gummy mouth feel, and their inability to provide gas retention. When I'm making keto bread and I'm using a high amount of protein, I sometimes need to add more water for those proteins. And oftentimes a longer mix time in order to develop the gluten, especially when I'm using those wheat protein isolates that are very elastic, I need to mix a little longer in order to develop that gluten. Also, the fermentation time will increase due to the lack of digestible sugars or other nutrients required by the yeast to leaven the dough. And so one option here is to add in yeast nutrients or yeast food. And also another processing step I may have to adjust for is I need to monitor and also possibly adjust the baking time and temperature. And this monitoring or thermal profiling can help you optimize your proofing and baking stages by correlating between oven conditions and microbial inactivation, crumb set, and color formation. Yeast loves digestible sugars and heats them up in order to produce that carbon dioxide gas. This gas gets trapped in the protein matrix and helps expand the dough. But with keto bread, I can't use digestible sugars. So what can help the yeast grow and produce gas? This is where I'm trying out various yeast nutrients and yeast foods from my favorite yeast suppliers. Also, when I'm making keto-friendly bread that still has a sweet note, I may substitute the sucrose, honey, or other digestible sugars or sugar alternatives such as high-potency sweeteners or sugar alcohols. 
Now, just be sure to pay attention to the sweetness curve of these sugar alternatives, because with these high, potent, high potency sweeteners, uh, they have a slightly different sweetness curve compared to the sweetness curve of sucrose. So you want to pay attention to how quickly you notice the sweet note, how long it lasts, and when it dissipates, and if that is similar to sucrose. Thank you, Sarah. And there you have it. I hope we have helped you today with your challenges in high protein baking. If you need samples or if you have any more questions, please reach out to our sponsors today at the email address provided below. Remember, MGP Ingredients FiberSim RS for resistant wheat starch is low FODMAP certified and ideal in products that support digestive health. Their Arise Wheat Protein Isolates provides up to 90% protein and improved functionality. Together, they reduce net carbs in bakery products, making it possible for you to bake high protein. Find out more now at mgpingredients.com. Till the next time, bakers, happy keto baking. Thank you.